Hi, it's Terry with the Covered Chipboard, and I'm back with part two of a craft along series, and we're making the haunted house. Uh, the materials we're going to be using today are the Cricut craft board in white, and the graphics medium chip white chipboard. So the craft board, if you go to Cricut.com and shop, and then you come over to cutting materials and go under Maker Cutting Materials, you will find Craft Board. And that's what we want to get. And the white, it comes in white, brown, and black. But we're going to use the white um, for this project. So you'll need one package. We won't use that much of it, but uh, probably several sheets. So if you have a little on hand already, then you'll probably be okay. So that's, and I will put links to these materials in the uh, post on my blog so you can find them real easy. The next product is the Graphics Medium Weight Chipboard. I get this from Amazon. Um, just search under, you can use all, it'll come up under all departments or arts, crafts, and sewing. Graphics Medium Weight Chipboard. It is 12 by 12. It comes in natural, and there's 25 sheets to a pack. Uh, this time it's 1562. It is on Prime, so you can get it free one day delivery. Uh, most time we know that's two days. Uh, it does come in different sizes, but I just buy the 12 by 12. The thickness of this is about half of what the Cricut heavyweight chipboard is. And the reason I'm using this for the um, roof, one, is to save a little bit of money, and two, you don't really need that firmness on the roof. But I did want the firmness for the main structure. So I'll have a link to this on here, too. And I think you might can find it in um, smaller packs. I'm not really sure. I normally just buy uh, the 25-pack. And sometimes you can get it for as little as 10 something a pack. It's usually between 13 and 16, somewhere around in there. You might have to look. They may have several different uh, items that are the same thing coming from different places that are different prices. So look around, and this one even has a coupon that you can use for $3.63 off. So that brings it down to 11 something. So that's a pretty good deal. So let's go on into uh, Cricut Design Space, and I wanted to show you this. Here are the pieces we're going to be cutting. I do have a, a screenshot of this on the blog post. This is our main base. Then these are the upper roof parts. This is a front, a back, and two end pieces. And this rectangle piece fits on the top of this once all four of these pieces have been put together. So um, I think it takes two mats to cut it. You'll want to use your strong grip map and tape it down on all the sides like we did with the heavy chipboard just to make sure it doesn't move. I'm going to go ahead in here to make it because I use a specific setting for the medium weight chipboard. Again, just like with the heavy chipboard, when you get to this point, you want to kind of move these around and put a little bit more space between them than what Cricut Design Space tries to do. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of fuzzing and rough edges. So I just moved this around a little bit. Once you've done that, click Continue, and it should hook up to your machine. Okay, so here is where you need to um, set your materials, and we're going to create a specific setting for your medium weight chipboard. So you want to click on browse all materials and then you want to go all the way to the, well you don't have to scroll, down to the bottom where it says material settings. Click on that. Then you're going to scroll to the bottom and it says add new material. Click that. We're going to type in graphics medium weight chipboard and click save and now it will come up with the options where you can or the area where you can set the options for this special cut setting 
uh, we're going to use the deep point blade. This is the cut passes. We're going to go five times. And we're going to change this um, pressure all the way to 350, which is the max it can go. And then we're going to click Save. Now, if you close this out, you'll be brought back to this window. You can browse all materials again and come up here and type in chipboard in the search. And here's our um, setting that we just created. I'm going to star it so now it will show up in my favorites. And click it to select it and click done. And so now it's coming up and it's showing me that I need the deep, deep point blade, load the mat, and it will cut all these pieces. Now while we're here, the second mat, I want to edit it because they've got everything shoved together. So again, I want to pull this apart, give it a little bit more space, and then click Done. So now when you comes up when it comes up we have the space between this one and we have the space between this one you can see where we spread them apart so you should get good clean cuts okay so now you know how to set your settings and from here we'll go on into the next video which is how to um, put all this together First thing we have is this uh, roof that's going to give you the overhang and you would just simply, once this has all been attached, you're going to take this and line it up right here and make sure that it's even on both sides and you'll have a little bit on the front. It'll be pretty flush towards the back. So you just simply glue that down. We're going to leave that there. And the next part, I'm going to scoot this back a bit, is uh, the construction of the roof itself. You've got two pieces that are the, for the sides. And then you have, uh, whoops, stuck together, two pieces for the ends. So let's go ahead. Again, I'm using Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Any kind of quick dry tacky glue is fine to use. Kind of sticky there. And scoot this back in. Hopefully it's in camera good. So these pieces, these side pieces, are going to attach to the outside, I'm sorry, the inside of this piece. So the best way to do this is to add some glue here along this edge. And then lay this piece down on your mat. Oh, let me not get myself confused here. Lay that piece down and scooch this piece up next to it. And just make sure that it's as straight as you can get it. Let them sit for just a second so that takes hold. And go ahead and start on your next piece. Okay, so what I've done here is I've glued the two short ends to the two long pieces, sides. And I've glued these so that they're inside. They're glued to the inside and flush along this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on now. And once that's done, you're going to glue this piece, just add glue along the bottom edge, and glue it onto this top base. And it'll wind up being pretty much flush along the back. Make sure that's good in camera. But flush along the back, and then an even amount of space on the left and right side, as well as this front edge. And um, just, it won't be perfect, but 
that doesn't really matter right now, so just glue it the best you can. And that's how it will wind up looking when it's finished. Let's see if I can turn this over. Again, my piece is not, there you go. My piece is not glued together because of uh, constructing it for those who want to do the inside. Okay, so I did mention that I was going to do a little bit of a video for the windows. Um, this would pertain, if you, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart here. If you um, are just doing the simple version and you have put black cardstock behind here or your clear acrylic behind here, um, there's another uh, cut pattern with the windows on it. And for each window, there's three different sizes, but for each window, there are two pieces. So for one of these sections, you would have two pieces for here, two for here, and two of the taller ones for the center. And what you're going to do is you're going to glue these two pieces together. And you want to get them as perfect as you can. And then once you've glued that together, you're simply going to lay them on top of here. Oops, fell crooked there on me. And glue them to the outside here. And once you have that done, uh, your windows will be complete. Now, I did mention something about um, using these pieces that were cut out from here as shutters. Whoops, as shutters. Uh, that's not going to work because they are too, they're too thick. So, um, you want to hang on to these. You can use them for something later on, but um, we won't be using them for the window shutters. Instead, I'm going to do shutters in out of the white craft board, which you can use. Uh, you do need to keep, there is a size that comes out. If you're doing the inside, finishing the inside, you need to keep the ones that came out of the um, wall, separator, wall separators because you can use those for doors. Those will work well that way. So hang on to those. I think there's six of them unless you've made more doors. So again, you're just going to glue your two pieces together. And once you have them glued together, you're going to glue it here in line. And that is the same for all over. And your windows will be finished. Now, if you've waited and haven't done your windows, and you're cutting them out of the clear uh, plastic, I've got some here I've cut out. There's three different sizes again. And... Uh, an option that you could do, you also have this little half moon little piece. Um, but an option, there's several options. I did mention earlier that you can take this plastic and use a fine grit sandpaper. And sand, you sand one way, then you come back and sand another way. And you only have to do that on one side. And that gives it kind of a frosted look. Another option, if you don't want a frosted look, I'm not gonna do this on my windows right now, but you can use um, Ranger, Tim Holtz Ranger um, alcohol inks. And here I've got butterscotch and caramel. And you can use those to decorate the plastic. It will adhere. So to do that, you need one of these little tools or some kind, they make a different kind of tool. This is just an old stamp tool that I have, and a piece of felt or one of the applicators uh, designed for the alcohol inks. And then I'm going to pick up the butterscotch first, and I'm just going to drop a few little drops here on it, the pad. And then you can take this and just dab it onto the plastic. And then I'm going to take some of the caramel and put it on here and kind of dab into it too. And just the two are kind of just mixing together. And you can let that dry. Get some more little 
It's nice if you can get some little lines in there. Let that dry. Let me see if I can get this to dry real quick. Quick. Then, just pretend this is your actual window. Or you could do this with a sheet of plastic if you want. If you want to not have to cut each window or use the window template, you can just get a whole sheet and glue the whole sheet back here. So then all you would do is attach this. And while you'll still be able to see through it, it will have a mottled effect. I don't know if you can see that well. Let me see if I can get something underneath it here. You can see how it has kind of a modeled effect, modeled effect to it. And it'll look really neat when the light's shining through. So that's an option for the windows as well. And again, it just it's just personal preference as to how you want to do your windows. If you are finishing the inside, and you're using the acrylic windows, what you'll do is take your, your window, it will rest inside the groove here. You just kind of have to scrunch it in there. Some of them will be a little looser, some will be tighter. But when you apply your... Um, your... Um, frame it will hold that plastic in there and you'll have frames for the inside or for the outside plus the inside as well but we'll get more into depth on that once we get to the point where we're actually working on the finishing the inside so that's just a quick bit about your um, windows and, and your options for that again as far as we're concerned right now uh, you would just take your windows and glue them on your window frames and glue them on outside and you should already have your plastic and such in there. When it comes to the front door, this is what I have done. You can see where I've cut out the um, pieces for the front door. This was the cutout that came out of the, the uh, chipboard when I first cut it. So I've kept that. I've got my two frames that I cut out of the white craft board going to glue those together and then glue them on top of this door piece. And then the cutout pieces from this frame, I'm going to apply inside so that it now gives the door a recessed front. And there's my front door. I'll add a little gold bead or black bead for a knob on the door later on. And you would do both the front and the back side of that if you're finishing the inside of the house. If you're doing just the simple version for the outside, you would just do one side. And then um, we'll get to painting the doors and frames once uh, we're down the road a bit. And that would then just slip right down, glue right back in place. And it does give it a little bit of a raised look. Uh, this piece would be your glass piece for here. And there's a frame for it as well. So, there's your doors and windows. And... From here, I will go back to working on this next top portion. And I don't know that I'm going to have a roof here. It may just be a little, like a walking or a widow's, what do they call it? Widow's walk, something like that. That may be what I do there. I, I haven't exactly decided. But that will be in um, part three. So thanks for hanging in and working, following along with this project, and I will see you in part three. Have a great day.